Paul Galpern is an associate professor in the Department of Biological Sciences. <laughs> when Paul showed his screen, it uh, took away my script. There we go. Uh, Paul is an associate professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at the University of Calgary. Paul's lab researches the sustainable intensification of cropping systems in Western Canada with a focus on beneficial insects. He is excited by the possibility for win-wins on the prairies where both profitability and environmental sustainability objectives can be achieved at the same time. Here's Paul. Thanks so much, Jay, and thank you very much for inviting me. I am indeed excited about uh, win-wins, and I hope to tell you about that. I want to start with the notion of a messy field and why it might matter to you and why it might matter in terms of beneficial insects as well. You know, what's going on inside those trees? Well, clearly this uh, grower has driven around them and has not cleared them. You know, uh, that's increased the gas usage, more seeding might have happened, fertilizing and spraying costs could have gone up as they inefficiently drive around them. But making the decision to leaving them there, was it a good one? And what can it do for the crop? And we're gonna look at that. We're gonna take the measure of messy fields from both earth and space in the next 12 minutes. So um, when I talk about messy and tidy fields on the top left, you can see what I would call some tidy fields. These are near Calgary. Uh, you can see the quarters that are with crop planted from fence row to fence row. And at the bottom left, there's a messier field. You've got patches of trees, you've got a wetland, you've got a shelter belt, and it's not all crop throughout the quarter. And what's going on on that messy field? Well, I can tell you that we know that there's a lot of things happening that uh, in those patches, those non-crop areas uh, that can help the crop. We've, we have things like pollination services. They are homes for bees that can go out there and, and pollinate the crop. We also have pest control that can happen in those patches. Spiders and beetles can march out from those patches and eat the bad guys in the fields. And there's other things that we might call ecosystem services or nature's contribution to people, whatever you like, whatever lingo you want to use, that's also happening in those spots on the messy field. Things like carbon storage in the roots of grass, water quality and regulation, and even habitat for all sorts of animals. Now, we're messy fields. So let's just take a bit of a closer look about what is actually going on biologically in terms of the different animals that you might see there. So here is a um, a wetland. It's a wetland um, with a canola field in bloom in the distance just south of Calgary. So the slough's got a few ducks on it. And in the foreground, there are, uh, we've got grass, but we also have some wildflowers. And that, that whole ecosystem of the grass and the wildflowers provides a home for natural enemies such as this beetle. And they can have a food source there all season long. And from there, they can march out into the field and munch the crop pests if there was a pest outbreak. Um, you know, so crop pests can be eaten by those beetles and spiders that are also making their home near the messy bit in your field. And it's also home, uh, it also provides resources for bees and those bees may head out into the field as well to pollinate and it provides spots for bees to nest parts of the ground that aren't frequently tilled or seed drilled. So there's less disturbance and it's easier for those bees to make their nest there. So that's why we call these messy bits. An ex the example here is a wetland, but it could be a patch of trees or a shelter belt, places that are hot spots for animals that provide ecosystem services. But you know what? Um, how does that actually work? How does it actually affect your crop? It's fine to talk about the biology, but are they getting out of that feature and affecting the crop? And we, uh, we call that a spillover effect. Are the bees or the beetles or the spiders or the natural enemies that make these features, these messy places their home, are they getting out of that feature and are they doing stuff? for the crop. So we look for what we call a spillover effect. And I'm going to show you how we tested for that with the help of the Canola Agronomic Research Program, 
since 2015, we have established what we call the Beneficial Insects Surveillance Network. And this has consisted of um, about 335 sites across Alberta, and you can see them here on these maps, places we've sampled, uh, and over 9,000 weeks worth of sampling, and we've gotten a whole range of animals, 300 bees and 41 beetles and 21 spider species, uh, and over almost 200,000 animals collected in, in, our, in our collection. And we can use this great deal of information to ask whether the animals are spilling over. We can do lots of other stuff with them, and we are doing that. I'm just going to talk about the spillover part. Uh, and you can see uh, here's some data from our collection. And as you move away from a wetland, that's this graph here on the bottom left, as you move away from a wetland, and he here's the number of spiders we got, you can see the spiders drop off as you move away. And that effect changes at different times of the year. So this tells us that those wetland features are having an effect, they're a hot spot, but it also tells us that the animals are moving into the crop at different times of the season. And that's also true for this very common beetle. Uh, it does a very similar thing. And we also saw a similar pattern for, for bumblebees that we found in the crop. So, if you're a grower, what do you take from all this? And here's my notes to you. Retain these messy areas in your field. Add more, maybe. Restore ones that are there, because those keep the natural enemies and the pollinators close to your crop, where if they're needed, if there's a pest outbreak, they can do something. So retain them for a beneficial effect. So. You know what, we found this spillover, we've got some evidence all across uh, our sampling across Alberta that animals are leaving these features, they're moving into the crop, but so what? Are they doing anything for the crop? Are they uh, helping uh, your crop um, produce more yield? And we call that effect a halo effect. If they are leaving this feature like this patch of, of trees in this wetland and they're moving out into the crop and they're eating the bad guys. If that's mattering at all to the crop, we might see a small boost in yield at a certain distance from those features. And we call that a halo effect. So we looked for that. And we did this as well, sponsored by the Canola Agronomic Research Program. We uh, used uh, precision yield data that we collected from about 100 growers, mostly in central Alberta. And we connected this to satellite imagery. So we, we can take pictures from space, and that's where the space bit comes in in this talk. We can take pictures from space and we can tell, uh, we can estimate the yield in different parts of your field from space. And we can build a model that connects precision yield to satellite imagery. So in a way we can spy on how your fields are doing uh, using this model. And what we, we can use that information to learn about how, uh, whether beneficial insects or be whether the messiness of fields is having an effect on the crop. So we looked at 757 fields, all near Vermilion, that's the yellow spots on this map, that's in central Alberta, and we, uh, we found this. We found that if you look at all of those fields, all those 757 fields all together, uh, and you, you, you go away from the edge of the field, so that's right here at zero, and you move away from the field edge, and you take the measure of the canola yield, here's low, here's high, as you move away from the edge of the field, initially you see that canola doesn't do very well. And you can see that. You look at the edge of any canola field and you know typically the plants aren't as vigorous and maybe the yield isn't as high. But it reaches a, hot, hot, a high point at a certain distance from the edge of the crop. And that peak here that we're seeing here, that tells us that something good is happening, that we have that halo that I talked about, that the yield is peaking and then it kind of drops off again as you move further away. And we didn't just see an increase in yield, we also see an, in an increase in the stability of the yield. And this, what stability means is how consistent are the pl plants? They're not just producing more seeds, but all of the plants that, and their neighbors are producing roughly the same number of seeds. And that kind of matters because it also tells us about quality. So we found a similar effect as you move away from one of these patches, we find that the stability uh, increases 
or in other words, the variability among plants drops. So let's put those pieces together. And what we find is there is a sweet spot, a certain distance from these messy places where we think beneficial insects are having an effect on the crop. And that sweet spot uh, is roughly about 50 to 100 meters from the edge of the field. So here's a message for growers. Canola plants, about 50 to 100 meters from the edge, are getting the most benefit from ecosystem services. It's a small benefit. It isn't a big one. It isn't going to change the profitability to a great degree. We didn't find a big effect, but we found some effect. And that tells us that those pest animals that can do the pest control are potentially there when they're needed, when there's a pest outbreak. We found something else too that much worth telling you about. It's that it's not just what's in your field, the messy stuff inside, it's also what's near your field that might affect your yield. And the big story here is uh, on this, this is a graph, it's not a picture of a field. As you increase the messiness, the number of things that aren't crop in your field or near your field, um, it has a, 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 and you also increase the number of crop fields that are nearby, there's also a sweet spot here. So what this tells us is that um, messy field margins, so in other words, you could have messy bits near your field that can boost your yield, but it can only boost your yield if there's also other crops nearby. So it's, we want some mess, but not too much mess. There's something in the middle, you know, like the Goldilocks zone, just enough, your porridge is just the right temperature here. So we want some mess, but not too much. And I could unpack this figure more if there's more questions later. We also tested this at the scale of Alberta. We wanted to know a bit further, do we see this effect across the whole of the province? And to do that, we used yield data provided by Alberta's crop insurance provider. We had about 60 million seeded acres between 2012 and 2017. And we found the same thing. We found that there is a sweet spot that messiness can boost the yield just a little bit, but you know, not too, we don't want too much messiness. So there's a little bit in between. And we saw that effect in canola, in wheat, uh, in barley and peas and oats. So let's pull the pieces together here in the last minute or and a half. And the story I want to tell you here is that messy places in fields, whether that's a wetland like this one or patches of trees or a shelter belt, if we can retain or restore or add new messy places, that provides a place, a home for beneficial insects like the beetles and spiders that can provide pest control during an outbreak or the pollinators that might help canola yield. And that in turn, ha we've seen an effect. We haven't connected it directly to these animals, but we've connected the messy places to the yield. And that tells us that there is some kind of ecosystem service happening in these messy places that is having a boost and it's affecting that yield just a little bit and that might in turn incentivize growers to keep these messy places in place and there's other benefits as well to having patches of trees or wetlands in your fields or near your fields they can deliver carbon storage they provide habitat they can support sustainability objectives and you know, if you're a grower, you can think about this in terms of social license to operate. You know, uh, you're actually, you're not hitting your crop. It might even benefit your crop. And it also helps uh, the environmental sustainability. And in future, it's very likely we're gonna see markets for the services that these places provide. So I just wanna summarize and say, looking across the prairies, and that's all the yellow stuff. Those are all the canola fields. That's the canola rotation footprint across the prairies. I see potential for win-wins. Wins for ecosystem services when we protect the messy places. Homes for beneficial insects that can boost your yield just a little bit. And the opportunity for all sorts of other good stuff that comes with that. And I. And my final slide here is to say thank you. Thank you particularly to growers that have supported great canola science through the Canola Agronomic Research Program. 
And also to say thank you to the large team that has supported me in this work, I, particularly those whose names are underlined and reporting results that have been published in these papers that you see. And we need to do uh, peer reviewed science here to help make sure that we're getting the strongest and best supported message to growers. So thank you for listening. I'd be happy to answer questions later.